Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Matthew Stafford Bowl takes place this week. Will it be the lovable Lions or the resurgent Rams that advance? Also, rivals react to a couple of legendary coaches moving on. And the Wild Card Weekend will also feature the McCarthy Bowl between the Cowboys and the Packers. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. On Sunday at Ford Field, the prodigal son returns. Matthew Stafford appearing in a playoff game at Ford Field. The conquering hero, just the conquering hero for the other team, the L.A. Rams, coming as the sixth seed to face the NFC North champion, Detroit Lions. Say it again, Matt Derry from Locked On Lions. The (laughs) NFC North champion, Detroit Lions. What is it going to be like to see Matthew Stafford in a playoff game that is going to be, it's going to be so joyous for Lions fans but then to have to share it with this guy across the field who they, who they still love. Just hearing you say NFC North champions, uh, Pete, and not saying green Bay Packers after it is, is, is interesting and fun, but you bring up a great point. I mean, this is mixed emotions. I don't think the lions are doing a video tribute. I don't think that, Mm -hmm. that fans are going to stand up and cheer. I think this is a different environment next year when he comes back to Ford field in a regular season game. That's one thing. But th- this is war, and, and, and Lion fans, yes, they 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 love Stafford, and most of them really really appreciated the double digit years that he was here. But they really want this game badly. Uh, they want to win a home playoff game. They just don't want to have this home playoff game. As you know, the last one that that they had was 1993 against the Pack, and and Favre and Sterling Sharp did their thing. So mm-hmm. it, it's um it, it it's it's a weird vibe to be sure. But I think the team is really focused on just winning the game. It's not about Stafford. It's not about golf versus McVay or anything like that. They they seem to have a, a bee in their bonnet ever since that Cowboys game. Um, and and we, we saw it in that last week of the season. They wanted to play their guys. Um, and and so that that feels like that's the vibe that they're carrying into, to your point. No, no pregame tribute. This is all business here for this Detroit Lions team. What is what is the matchup like then for the Lions? Because this defense in the second half of the season has not been playing their best ball, and they do have to go up against Matthew Stafford, Puka Nakua, and this Cooper Cup offense that, when they've been healthy, has rolled this season. Yeah, man, that's the thing. The Rams have won seven of eight, and a lot of it is due to the fact that, like you said, Stafford, Nakua, uh, Cooper Cup, Kyron Williams, an improved offensive line, and all yeah. of a sudden now the Lions, you know, what? this isn't Nick Mullins, playing 500 and throwing you the pill. This is a, a big-time Pro Bowl quarterback coming in here, knows the building very well, mm. uh, and, and if given time, can really slice and dice you up. So, uh, you know, I, I think this is going to be one of those days that the Lions are going to have to get more pressure than just Aiden Hutchinson on Stafford, bother him a little bit. And, and this crowd is going to have to play a huge role in terms of uh, disrupting those offensive linemen. Maybe a third and eight turns into a third and 13 with a couple of false starts. That's huge. And I think the crowd will rise to the occasion, but definitely a concern, and you you, you pointed it out, are those corners for the Lions right now that really are not playing well. Given the coach on the other sideline, Sean McVay, for Jared Goff, is this the biggest game of his career other than maybe the Super Bowl from a couple of years ago? I mean, you have to figure it is. He he won't tell you that. He'll say, mm-hmm. look, I just want to win for this city and for this organization. I'm not even thinking about that. I've already played the Rams two years ago. I went back to L.A. That's in the past. McVay was very classy this week in saying, look, we, we probably made some mistakes in how we handled that. I've told Jared that we're on good terms. But, yes, when, when the stakes are this high and, like you said, the prodigal son returns – Goff wants to outshine and, and play good football. And if Sam Laporta can go, which there's a chance he can, that's just another weapon in, in the arsenal. They seem to play really, really well, especially the, that passing game at home. And I think Ben Johnson's going to want to show off a little bit. There's eight, eight coaching openings. And, mm-hmm. if you know, if he has a good performance on Sunday night football in front of everybody uh, in calling plays, showing the creativity he's shown the last couple of years, 
think the Lions will be in good shape, but I do think the Rams are going to score some points. This will be a high scoring game. Stay up to date all year on the Detroit Lions by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Lions on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, Nick Saban and Bill Belichick are moving on from their teams. How happy do their rivals feel about it? With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seats, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time has plenty of last-minute tickets to your favorite team. They also make it easy to get in the gate with flash deals and zone deals. Game Time makes it easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. They've got views from all the seats in the venue. Game Time also has the lowest price guaranteed. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms and apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On, L O C K E D O N, for $20 off Game Time. Last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today, here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Nick Saban retired from Alabama and Bill Belichick stepped down from the Patriots. The football coaching world was shaken up in a matter of 24 hours. As for their rivals, well, they aren't so sad. Tennessee Titans fans had some high highs, but some low lows when it comes to dealing with Bill Belichick. My name is Tyler Rowland, host of the Locked on Titans podcast. Look, everyone will remember the 50 point beatdown that the New England Patriots put on the Tennessee Titans a little over a decade ago. I don't think any Tennessee Titans fan of a certain age will ever forget that. It was kind of the moment where you thought, oh, man, the Tennessee Titans are a joke. But, but I think karma came back around for the Tennessee Titans when the Tennessee Titans ended the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick era in New England, knocking them out of the playoffs in 2019, finishing the game with a pick six on Tom Brady from Logan Ryan of the Tennessee Titans at the time. I think while that 50-point beatdown was absolutely excruciating and one of the worst moments in Tennessee Titans history, coming back in New England in the playoffs nearly a decade later and ending the Tom Brady era and the Bill Belichick, Tom Brady together era in New England, that has to give you a little bit of, of payback. If you're a Tennessee Titans fan, that has to feel pretty good, like karma paid you back off. So a mixed bag for the Tennessee Titans with Bill Belichick, obviously a very low low, but also a very high high. As for Nick Saban, he patrolled Alabama sidelines for 17 years. He only lost to Auburn five times. When asked about the most memorable of the Iron Bowls against Saban, our Locked On Auburn host didn't pick any of those games. I'm Zach Blackerby with Locked On Auburn. And obviously every Iron Bowl, something crazy seems to happen. But the one I'm going to remember most is the last one that Nick Saban was a part of. Whether you call it the fourth and 31 or the the Isaiah Bond ridiculous catch or the Milro magic or the Milro miracle. I mean, that was, there's been a lot of kind of crazy endings for the Iron Bowl, but those typically go in Auburn's favor. Now was the one that went in Nick Saban and Alabama's favor. And it was a great throw by Milro. And it was obviously a great call because it worked. But to me, that's the one where Nick Saban ripped my heart out the most as, as somebody. I, I took my wife to her first Iron Bowl. We're sitting in the corner where Bond caught it. It was brutal. It was brutal. I still wake up in the middle of the night sweating thinking about it. But uh, obviously, uh, hats off to the GOAT. And uh, yeah, the fourth and 31 was definitely the time that hurt the most. Belichick coached one of the largest comebacks in Super Bowl history among his six wins. Few coaches will live up to his Super Bowl dominance. Well, the biggest thing that Bill Belichick ever did with the New England Patriots that New Orleans Saints fans will remember has absolutely nothing to do with the Saints themselves. I'm Ross Jackson, host of the Locked On Saints podcast. And for New Orleans Saints fans, the biggest thing they'll remember from Bill Belichick was watching Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots storm back after a 25-point deficit was opened up between the New England Patriots 
and those hated, dreaded Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons at the end of the third quarter or near the end of the third quarter were up 28 to three. Or I'll never forget those numbers. Uh, at that point and went on to blow that 25 point lead only to lose in overtime. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick storming back 34 to 28. That win, which had absolutely nothing to do with the New Orleans Saints, has given the New Orleans Saints fans so much fodder to use against their rival fans of the Atlanta Falcons. Every time that there's an argument between the two teams, New Orleans Saints fans always throw out the 25 point lead, always throw out 28 to three. There's a there's people wearing shirts about 25, 20, uh, 28 to three. The New Orleans Saints uh, social media pages lean in on the 28 to three jokes. There is just nothing better than an Atlanta Falcons blown lead and of course the biggest one out of the many that they have to choose from don't get me wrong the biggest one though was that super bowl 51 absolute meltdown saban's only loss in the sec championship came against florida in 2008 he got his revenge though as our locked on gators host painfully remembers i don't typically celebrate when a coach retires however nick saban i am so happy is gone because Nick Saban actually ruined an entire day, an entire season for me when I was 13 years old. Little 13 years old. I was like four foot 11 when I was 13. So I was tiny. And Nick Saban, you made not just Tim Tebow cry. You made me cry, Brandon Olson of now Locked On Gators. But that SEC championship game for me was just absolutely heartbreaking because Nick Saban wasn't Nick Saban when he did it. Nick, like Nick Saban wasn't arguably the greatest college football coach of all time. This was the start of the Alabama dynasty. But for me, it was Florida 12 and 0 coming off an absolute stomping over Florida state, Florida, a team that routinely scored 40, 50 and two times that season scored 60 points and a defense that allowed 20 points just twice and a season high 23 points before that SEC championship game. And what could possibly be thought of as the birth of the Alabama dynasty? Oh man, 32 to 13, Alabama demolished, curb stomped the Florida Gators and made, again, made, made 13 year old, little 13 year old me cry and ruin my day but I will thank you because your retirement made my entire week. 2024 is wonderful. And there may only be one team that can say they had Belichick's number, the team that prevented the perfect season. This week, one of the giants in the NFL coaching circles, and no, I'm not talking about the New York Giants, is heading in another direction after nearly a quarter of a century with the New England Patriots. Hi, everybody. I'm Patricia Traina, host of the Lock on Giants podcast. And I'm, of course, talking about Bill Belichick, the future Hall of Fame head coach who is currently chasing the all time regular and postseason win total record held by legendary Dolphins head coach Don Shula. And as probably is well known by now, Bill Belichick and the New York Giants have quite the history together. Belichick rose through the coaching ranks, literally starting at the bottom once he arrived in East Rutherford in 1979 as a member of Ray Perkins's staff before working his way up the ladder to defensive coordinator for the big blue wrecking crew defense that was such a force in the 1980s. That defense was instrumental in contributing to two Super Bowl championships, Super Bowl 21 and Super Bowl 25. Belichick, known for his crafty out-of-the-box game plans, took that with him to New England, where he crafted some of the best defenses based on his philosophies. But ironically, the memory that probably will stand out most to Giant fans and those of us who cover the Giants was how quarterback Eli Manning and the Giants offense were able to get the best of Belichick and the Patriots in Super Bowls 42 in which the Patriots quest for a perfect season was ruined in that game and Super Bowl 46. Now, some might say that Belichick might have secretly been happy for his old team, thinking that if he was going to lose in those games, better to lose to the Giants than to any other NFC opponent. 
We'll never know for sure what the crafty Belichick thought. But one thing we do know is that it's a sad day in New England and the end of a glorious era in which a one-time low-level NFL assistant wrote his ticket to the Hall of Fame by staying true to himself, working hard, and sticking to his principles and building a winning program. Coming up, the McCarthy Bowl is the wild card game we didn't know we needed. The NFL playoffs are coming, and now's the perfect time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, what are you waiting for? The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, teasers, and more. There's also weekly promos and boosts to give you plenty of opportunities to increase your payout. The Lions are slight favorites with the Matthew Stafford Bowl over the Rams. FanDuel likes the Lions by three. Meanwhile, the Cowboys have the edge over the Packers in the McCarthy Bowl. Bulls abound. I thought bowl season was over. FanDuel likes Dallas by seven, though that's down from seven and a half. You can also combine bets for a bigger payout. Same game parlay is a great way to enjoy watching sports. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and do the NFL season right. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. The Green Bay Packers weren't supposed to be here, but they are. Now Mike McCarthy, who many believe is coaching for his job in this playoff game in particular, faces his former team. I joined Marcus Mosher from Locked On Cowboys to break down the matchup. I don't know, so I don't know if they're going to play a ton of man, but they've been using these five-man surfaces of late. It was something that Raheem Morris did in that Rams Super Bowl run to get a bunch of one-on-ones. And this is to your point about let's isolate Terrence Steele one-on-one against Rashawn Gary or whomever. And the, the Cowboys against five man pressures, they, they become 16th in success rate when you bring five. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you, you are sorry. They're, they're 16th in explosive plays. They don't create big off that. So the Packers defense, all they want to do is not give up explosive plays. So I think that's the best way to do that. The, the defense is, is a tough one. I, like, I don't have a lot of answers for Joe Barry. I, I just don't. Um, put Jair on, on CeeDee Lamb as much as you can would be what I would say. And, and here's the thing for me. Uh, don't turn it over. Yeah. Don't turn it over. I know that's like simplistic, but the Cowboys, I believe in all five of their losses, lost the turnover battle in all those mm-hmm. games. And so you can't, if you want to win the turnover battle, it's really hard to do that if you have giveaways. So don't give the ball away and you have a good opportunity. Um, I think the Packers are going to score on this Cowboys defense because I think they can stay balanced. I think they can run the ball effectively enough. And for all of the good things that this Cowboys defense can do, you've got Stephon Gilmore playing in his shoulder harness. That's not ideal. This Packers offense is really, really, really fast with Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs. and, and, And we'll see if Christian Watson can play, but the tight ends are really fast with Luke Musgrave and, and Tucker Craft. Um, but the, the Cowboys defense, 24th in DVOA on throws to the middle of the field. That's where Jordan Love kills teams, especially off play action. And so I feel like this is going to be a shootout. This is going to be one of those like heart in your throat kind of games that ends up 35-31. And I, I'm going to pick the Cowboys. Um, I think the Packers can win. I think the way that I usually do this, Marcus, is if I think one team can win by double digits, but the other one can't, I'm going to pick that team, the yeah. team that I think can win yeah. by double digits. I think it's more likely the Cowboys win by double digits than the Packers. But I also think if this is a close game and the sphincters tighten over on that Dallas sideline a little bit, and we've seen that happen sure. before, that's when I think the Packers, if they can keep this close the whole way, that's where they can win it. They win it late on a late drive. Um, probably not a late stop. Let's be honest. It's Joe Barry. So I think, I, I think seven and a half is too much. You take the points and shoot out. Okay. So I think this is one of those like 28, 31 kind of things, 35, 31, even 35, 27. Um, wait, is that too many points? No, that's that, that covers technically. Um, so I think, I think that's where I see this game, but I, I, there is a, a roadmap for sure for the Packers to pull this upset. One last thing just here for, from the Cowboys that we haven't mentioned. We have not mentioned Micah Parsons once. Mm, well, played, pretty good at football. Pretty good at hold football. Him. Just hold him. I mean, literally, I, I'm not joking <laughs> when I say the Packers should just teach their guys how to hold really well. He's not drawn a holding call in 11 games. He's That's not wild. drawn illegal hands <laughs> in the face all season. But 
in his last three play, I'm sorry, in his three playoff games that he's played, he's only played three in his career, double digit pressures in every game. Wow. He knows how to turn it on when it comes to the playoffs. And what we've seen from Dan Quinn over the last three years is he's going to play almost every snap. And when he's not playing edge, he's going to be lining up at linebacker. So there's not going to be Micah Parsons coming off the field. And that's when you can expose the Cowboys. Uh, he's got, he's the key for Dallas. If he gets 10 to 12 pressures and he's constantly harassing Jordan love, they're going to be fine. But if green Bay can limit him at all, that's when the big plays could happen. Stay up to date all year on the green Bay Packers and Dallas Cowboys by subscribing to locked on sports today, locked on Packers and locked on Cowboys on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And finally, Bill Belichick and Nick Saban coached together for four seasons with the Cleveland Browns. From 1991 through 1994, the duo racked up a record of 31 and 33, though they did make the playoffs in 1994. They won their first playoff game to, who did they play against? The New England Patriots. Individually, they won a lot of games after that. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, who will be advancing to the divisional round of the NFL playoffs? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today locked on podcast network presents locked on sports today for more episodes of locked on sports today go to our video on demand click on sports at the top of your screen there you'll find past episodes of locked on sports today plus other locked on shows on demand